One question that I've been kind of dancing around, I think, as we've looked at the Psalms, is asking the question, are the Psalms instructional? Or is it a teaching book? And, and really, that's a question that doesn't have a clear answer. The uh, Psalms, if you read them as Torah, if you accept that the five-book division is sort of hearkening back to Torah, and that uh, opening with a Torah psalm sort of shapes the way you read the rest of the book, then the answer is probably yes. And so unsurprisingly, individuals who read the book canonically do tend to think of the, the book of Psalms as intentionally instructional. Uh, Gerald Wilson says that the Psalms are instructional individually. In other words, there exist Psalms that teach specifically and intentionally, and that the Psalms as a whole were edited purposely to provide instruction for the community. Other scholars, like Norman Wybrey, uh, said uh, maybe psalms could be instructional individually. There might be a category of, of teaching psalms, but there is absolutely no purposed editing in the, in the psalms at all. There's no way you can say uh, overall it's a teaching book. Well, I mean, what can it teach us? What are the things it can teach us? I think one of the things that we've talked a little bit about is it can teach us how to pray. Uh, the psalms do represent prayer, and, and how a person prays represents what they believe about prayer. And the fact that these psalms were selected and other psalms were not reveals what the community believed and what they wanted to teach through prayer. And we would say, as individuals of faith, by extinction, what God wanted us to have about this model of prayer. But there's another more intentional kind of teaching we could talk about, and that is the issue of wisdom psalms. Now, you've heard me sort of use that term sort of flippantly as we've gone through. You've mentioned that as a category of wisdom, and certainly Gunkel identified several uh, wisdom psalms. Uh, he, he had several forms that he saw of his wisdom psalms. Um, some psalms may have been composed with the intention of instruction, but the problem is it, it's difficult to, to really pin that down. I mean, if, we, if you're starting to say that, well, all the psalms can teach us something, then all of a sudden pinning down what a wisdom psalm looks like can get a little nebulous. Some people have tried to be very explicit. Roland Murphy uh, gives us seven rhetorical indications of what a wisdom psalm is, that that a sapiential writer or, or a sage uh, is going to put uh, together. And so I list those seven for you there. In addition to those seven rhetorical devices, uh, he made some content arguments. So whenever one compared the wicked and the righteous, you know, that notion of the two ways, the, the way of the righteous and the way of the wicked, um, anytime you had a concept of retribution uh, or fear of the Lord, if you found that in the Psalms, that all of those could indicate some kind of, of wisdom psalm. But not everybody buys that. In fact, James Crenshaw notes that four of, of Murphy's five content qualifications would match the prophet Amos, and nobody would consider Amos to be a, a wisdom writing. Um, Norman Wybrey goes the other way and identifies 13 pure wisdom songs, and he doesn't even include retribution as one of his wisdom categories. Uh, on the other hand, Crenshaw denies that there is such a thing as wisdom psalms, that, that there might be psalms that have some wisdom influence in them, but we can talk about lament, we can talk about royal, we can, we can talk about uh, hymns, but we cannot talk about wisdom in the mind of, of James Crenshaw. So is, are there wisdom songs? Are there not wisdom songs? I don't know. I tend to defer to the, to the side that, yeah, we can probably talk about some psalms as wisdom psalms. Um, but I also recognize that they're also very hard to, to, to pin down, that, that kind of thing. Um, but how can a, a psalms teach intentionally? Well, one thing they can do is, is if you have a, a first-person verb, uh, you are encouraging the reader or the hearer to come to the same conclusions. Uh, psalm 73, for example, is the psalmist walks through this journey of faith that they had that was so important uh, to um, Walter Brueggemann in, in looking at the overall story of the Psalter. Uh, it's also common that uh, in wisdom literature you get an admonition where the, the author is calling the reader or the hearer to, to do something. That's not very common in the Psalms. You do find it in Psalm 130, but, but it's, it's pretty rare to have that kind of, of encouragement from the psalmist. Usually the psalmist is more focused on self. Um, they also might be uh, teaching through observation. So in other words, they're, they're describing a situation and then the reader is supposed to draw um, or infer some conclusion based on it, uh, like Psalm 24, you know, the earth is the Lord and all that's in it. And so then therefore you need to, to draw the conclusion based on that. Um, they're also, I think, and this is something I think everyone would agree that the, the Psalms teach um, maybe unintentionally uh, by modeling for us. I mean, collecting these Psalms provides instruction, as I said, and, and repeated patterns of prayer and behavior 
allow a reader or a hearer to infer appropriate means of response. Uh, so, I mean, you think about that, that means that, that you have to think about the Psalms as uh, an edited book. People were including some and not including others. And most of the time, we, we don't have any problems thinking about that. But because they are canon, they model an appropriate worship response to issues. So like in the case of, of, for example, the imprecatory Psalms, which we just talked about, something like 137. Uh, when the psalmist suffers violence, retribution is placed in Yahweh's hands. That's an important model that you get in the Psalms, that whenever the psalmist is suffering violence or, or from enemies, that the psalmist is, is putting that over in Yahweh's hands. That's an important principle that, that I think that you can learn from the Psalms, perhaps even unintentionally. So do the Psalms teach? Absolutely. Is it on purpose? Well, I, it's intentional in the sense that God put it there. Uh, did the, the original authors intend to teach in that way? Uh, I don't know uh, for, for sure, but I'll let you make that judgment.